Let me see if I can. Introducing comic books if I can character. Kid Rock. <laughs> Destroy the premises. We got a rock here. I don't hero. think I can even sing a Kid Rock song. You can't. It's a Kid Rock song. I walk a lonely mm -hmm. yeah, road, to the only one. Mm -hmm. That is Green Day. I'm going to uh, be a cowboy, baby. Oh, yeah. That one's Kid Rock. Mm -hmm. Cowboy, baby. It's been all cowboy. my time in Hollywood and back. Even it's the Wild West movie. Wild Wild West. That's Will Smith. Kid right. Smith. <laughs> I get the two mixed up all the time. You know? <laughs> They're very similar. Yeah. It is. It yeah. is comic book month, so here I am today to talk about the comic book game. Here I am. Here I am. Da -da, da -da. Talk about video games. Another Kid Rock classic. So, yeah, that's, that's Kid Rock. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so Teddy talked about the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and there's actually a little bit of crossover in our topics today, uh, because in the game Injustice 2, which is not my game, uh, the team, the team and T were a guest character or guest characters. I guess they they take okay. up one fighter slot. The other character that was a guest character is actually my topic for today. Does anyone know who the other guest character was? No. Or that game? No. No, no, no takers. It was Hellboy. Today I'm talking about Hellboy Web of Word uh, for modern consoles and PC. I played it on Steam. Because I have my Steam deck and I want to play it that way. This game came out last year um, and it is made by, let me get the studio's name up here, uh, Good Shepherd Entertainment. Uh, Good Shepherd Entertainment, before this, they made Weird West, which has a very similar art style. Uh, people, whenever Weird West came out, people said, hey, that art style looks like uh, Mike Magnola's art style from Hellboy. And you know what? It, it sure fucking did. And their next game just so happened to be a Hellboy game that they worked with Mike Magnola, the creator of Hellboy, to create. This game came out in 2023. It is a roguelike game. It came out for $20 brand new. That's kind of rare for a game of, you know, like a licensed game like this. Um, and it knows exactly what it's trying to be. And what it's trying to be is it's, it's good. It needs a little bit of work, I say. Uh, but... I think that it nails a lot of aspects of Hellboy and, and comic books, and I'm going to talk about that today. You now, should, you Hellboy should, has always been a character that... What? You should probably uh, get the... Turn out the webcam. Yeah, there you go. It's, it's, it's very... Hellboy's always been a character that's had a hard time being um, adapted into other mediums. Uh, the mo There's obviously the successful... Ron Perlman movie that, you know, by uh, uh, Gamma de Toro, um, which is good, but is nowhere near being accurate to what Hellboy is. It's just kind of a fun, like, popcorn flick. Um, and from there, there's been some other shitty movies and some really bad games. Um, Web of Word, I think, is the first time that, that somebody's actually attempted to adapt the Hellboy comics into something that is faithful to being, uh, you know, the Hellboy comics. Uh, Web of Word is a roguelike where you're going to be playing through um, different runs. You know, if you play in a game like Hades, which did, we, we brought up earlier, um, it's similar to a game like that. In Web of Word, paranormal spikes have been happening all over the world. Uh, it turns out there's this other dimension called the Word uh, that is connected to our world. Uh, you, the uh, BPRD, which is the Bureau of Paranormal Research and Defense, um, which is, you know, who Hellboy works for, they go to a European building called the Butterfly House, which is connected to the Word. And from there, Hellboy gets dropped into the Word and has to go through different areas in the Word and defeat bosses to try to figure out what's happening and why this, this other dimension is, is causing these paranormal spikes. Um, what's cool is that between your runs, you get to walk around the Butterfly House and talk to different members of the BPRD, kind of get mission updates, uh, things that are happening, what the characters think. You know, there's like a, there's a lady that's in charge of the mission that doesn't really like Hellboy that much. There's a guy that's in charge of the tech. There's like folklore, um, you know, specialists who know all about like the different, you know, 
types of creatures and stuff in the world, you know, Bigfoot, whatever, fairies. Um, it's pretty cool to get to talk, you know, like, walk around and talk, because the game is fully voice acted, and Hellboy himself is actually voiced by Lance Riddick. This is one of his last roles uh, before he passed away last year. And uh, pretty cool, because apparently he always wanted to play Hellboy. And it is nice seeing him play the character, because he has a very, like, soft, you know, deep, like, you know, smooth voice. Um, and it works for Hellboy because Hellboy's not really like a gruff character like like he's been depicted in the movies and stuff. Hellboy is kind of he's he's kind of standoffish and he doesn't really like make funny quips a lot. He just kind of gets to the point. He's he's kind of a brute. Um, so it's fun seeing Lance Riddick do it because Lance Riddick he still gets some quips in here or there, but his character is really subdued, and it's very cool to see that depiction of the character that is comic book accurate. Other than you know, rather than the Ron Perlman version, which is like very you know joke heavy and stuff. Um, so in the game, you will be going between the Butterfly House and the Word, uh, trying to figure out what's happening. Each run in the Word, you basically go through um, different rooms. And each each room is connected by a gate, and the gates sometimes will tell you what's gonna you know lead into the, the different rooms. So maybe like one gate will have a heart on it. Obviously, that's gonna be like you can gain back health in that room. Uh, one will have like a bag. You can buy things in that room. Um, and eventually, as you go through the different areas and fight enemies, uh, you will find one with a skull on it, which is gonna be the boss for that area. There are five areas in total. After you beat all five areas, you do have to do a full run through all five areas on one life. That's currently where I am in the game, and it's very hard to do. Um, the combat is fun. You are equipped with Hellboy's right hand of doom, which is his giant hand, and also his pistol, which is the Good Samaritan. Um, you can actually swap the gun out for different guns, like a shotgun and a missile launcher, or like, no, I mean like, like a grenade launcher, um, if you want to. Um, and you can also get different charms that will affect uh, the way you play. Uh, like, there's some that can, like, cut enemies' defenses and stuff. Um, and you'll pick up different charms and abilities as you go through each run. Um, it is pretty good. The comic books, like, the art style looks damn close to the uh, comics. It has, like, really harsh shadows and, you know, really vibrant colors. Um, it looks really good. Like, uh, you know, like, in action. Um, the issues that I have with the game is the repetitive nature of the roguelike element. Um, each time you do a run, even though the environment may change, like sometimes you're in like an old village, you know, you're in the woods, you're underwater in like a sunken city, you're in like like abandoned train tracks and stuff. The object, like the levels themselves, don't really change that much. You're still going room to room fighting waves of enemies, you know, picking up charms until you find that final boss of the area. So there's not really too much to really, to, like, set the areas apart except for the art design. Um, and this is a game that I'm glad I bought on Steam because I, I get to play it on my Steam Deck. Um, it's a game that's good for short bursts for me because where it is so repetitive, basically, you know, you'll either die or complete an area and then you'll go and talk to people at the butterfly house and then you're just back into the word uh it's you know back and forth back and forth which is honestly a problem that i have with a lot of roguelikes is that they get a little repetitive after a while so it's hard for me to play them for a long period of time um but this one's pretty good uh, from what i hear it is pretty short i know i'm near the end of it and i have maybe six to seven hours clocked so i couldn't imagine just taking you more than maybe 10 hours to beat uh, on a, you know, as a whole, uh, but it is twenty bucks. I bought it for ten bucks on sale, and uh, I've been enjoying it, and it's pretty good. A good art style kind of reminds me of, like Mad World with color. Yeah, that's that that that's that's basically just how the um, comic books look. How the Hellboy comics look It's like that art style. I think I can respect that. It's it's a little too um, flat. I think is the way I describe it for my taste. But obviously, it's it's unique and it's like you said, it, it looks like the comic book. So for that, I give it props. Um, are, how big into Hellboy are you? Are you a huge Hellboy fan? Oh yeah, I love Hellboy. 
it's something that you wanna be I wish I could like I, baby. <laughs> hey boy, baby. Um I don't like I do collect comics, but I don't collect like a ton of comics, yeah. but Hellboy's been one that I've I've read. I read a lot of comics online, and I've read a lot of Hellboy. And um, obviously, I, I first got into Hellboy because of the Ron Perlman version, because I really liked that movie. And then once I learned that, like, Hellboy in the comics is... Like, basically, Hellboy in the comics is, like, he's always in, like, gothic castles, and he's fighting, like, Lovecrafty and monsters and stuff. And, like, the movie version was basically not Hellboy, that was basically Men in Black <laughs> but it's Hellboy, you know? Oh, yeah. I was like, oh, damn, that's not Hellboy at all. And, like, I, I get to learn what Hellboy actually was. So now I kind of resent the Del Toro <laughs> version of the character. <laughs> mm. But, you know what? If it wasn't for that version, I would have gotten into him, right? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, I... So is, is, is Hellboy Marvel? Or DC? No, Dark Horse. Dark Horse. Oh, Dark Horse. He's, you know, so, so it's like, you know, Dark Horse is like a, they're a publisher, but they, they don't really have like a brand like mm. Marvel or DC. They just kind of have stuff. Like, I, I think even, I think Spawn. No, no, Spawn is, uh, Spawn's Image Comics, I think. But, you know, Dark Horse just publishes a lot of stuff. Uh, so, yeah, they aren't like connected at all, which is something I can respect. Like, Hellboy has its own universe. Hellboy does have spinoffs. Like, there's, there's other characters that have their own comics that came from Hellboy. But like it's like it's not like he's part of the larger Dark Horse universe. Oh, no, they don't tie them all like... together. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's like I said, if it's not like a spinoff from Hellboy, no, it's not connected to Hellboy at all. Okay, I was wondering. Hellboy's yeah, always yeah. seemed kind of somewhere between like, like con- corporate and niche. It's like you know, I don't think he's ever really been yeah like, one of the big dogs, but also. Like he's not like I'm. I'm thinking of like the darkness or like Spawn even a little bit. He's like yeah, even Spawn. Spawn yeah, yeah. He's 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 very indie in that one uh, character himself. And also Hellboy again. Like media has never understood the character because Hellboy's not a superhero. He's not like a heroic character. He's a paranormal investigator who just happens to punch the shit out of monsters sometimes. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, it's it's a character that, like, I, I feel like has never caught on because they never really understand how to, uh, how to adapt him, you know? How would you adapt him? Uh, I, yeah, it's, it's, it's a hard question. <laughs> it's, 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 I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> um... But well, do you feel like know. this All is a that... successful adaptation? Yeah, that, that definitely. The best part of the game for me was the story, or still is the story. I'm still, like I said, I'm like right at the end. Is the story and the the presentation again? Just the the game's completely voice acted, and Lance Riddick does a great job as Hellboy. I'm I'm glad he got to do that role before he died, uh, because his his voice is just iconic. So get to hear him. What else did he do? This game was a Surprise. Oh, he was dude. He's the concierge to John Wick. He was Wesker in that Resident Evil show that sucked. Um, he's he's been a lot of stuff. He's Lance Riddick. You'll know if you look him up. You know him. Okay, maybe I'll know him when I see him. Yeah, he was Wesker. Yeah, he was Wesker. Remember Black Wesker? Yeah, you know Wesker in the Resident, the Netflix yeah, one, Spencer. We watched that. He's the oh, one thing, okay. the saving grace for it. Yeah, the only good part yeah. of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's, yeah, he's literally the only good part of that show. Was him. <laughs> yeah, he's been in a lot of stuff, but, but yeah, apparently he always wanted to do Hellboy, so I'm I'm happy he got to do Hellboy before he died because it, fit, it fits really well. And it, it it was kind of weird like hearing his voice for a bit like as Hellboy because I just wasn't used to that. But after I got used to it, like and like settled into it, like it works for the character because like I said, Hellboy in the comics is like pretty subdued and he does quips, but he's he's more like straight to the point. So it was fun getting to hear his depiction of the character. Fitting he played Hellboy now he's living in oh. Web of Word. If anybody calls it Web of Weird, like I saw some reviewers do, know that they didn't fucking play the game because in the game they call it the word, not the weird. So yeah, Unless they're I, trying I to make like a lady title. 
Yeah, that, yeah. But no, I, I, I didn't buy this game last year because I was interested in it as a fan. But like, I saw people that, that were like, oh, Web of Weird is a bad game. It was, it was like reviewers. And now that I've mm. played it and I know that it's not weird, it's word. And they say it multiple times throughout the game. Repeatedly, they, they call it the word. I'm like, wow, you didn't even play the game. <laughs> you just played like a second of it, probably. And I was like, what? <laughs> or with the sound off, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, but yeah, I can't imagine fair. mispronouncing it that way. Yeah, like that's that is how you word. That's how you pronounce that phonetically. Wired, maybe even then. Yeah, I'm thinking like other things I've seen, like worm, like a dragon would be wyvern. Well, yeah, yeah, wyvern. <laughs> well, yes, that's that's not wired. that's not W Y R though. Mm-hmm. No, is it not? Isn't I think it is. No, it's W Y V. Oh no, W Y V. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I see what you mean. I yeah, think about the yeah, vowel. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Wire wife. Oh. Wives. 